Good morning for those of you who don't know. My name is Maya Karen. I run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature luxury, contemporary, and how to style and now natural hair care. So if you were into any of those things, please consider subscribing to my channel. Click the notification bell. That way you will never miss a video. So today's video is going to be a little different. There is a topic that I guess is a swarming around on TikTok. It kind of has to do with hair, but it doesn't. It more so has to do with appearance. So this is not really a fashion video. This is not really a hair or natural hair video. We're going to talk about something that goes on top of your head, but this is a topic that I think needs to be discussed I because I wanna give my opinion. Um, and I just think it's very interesting. So I've said that, and then let me go ahead and say this. Today we're going to be talking about bonnets, okay? I'm going to, and if you're a bonnet wearer in public, that is your prerogative. But I can tell you right now that you're going to be offended by this video. It's going to be my opinion. It's going to be the opinion of one of the ladies in the video and it's not, and it's going to be an opinion of another woman that's reacting to her video in this video. If you are a bonnet wearer in public, you're going to be offended by this video. If you want to watch, you can. If you want to drag me, you can. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm saying my piece. I'm saying my opinion because I had this platform. And this topic to me is really intriguing because I think that while this topic might seem small or vain or minuscule to some people, I think it's actually part of a bigger problem when it comes to the black community and then when it just comes to young women in general okay so let's go ahead and get started okay so today we are going to talk about a reaction video and i will give you a little bit of background just in case you're not able to understand her in the video so this started when a black owned dentist office posted a sign that said no bonnets no house shoes no pajamas People were pissed off, excuse me, people were ticked off about it. So much so that they took the social media and they just started threatening this woman. They started leaving bad reviews on purpose and they were trying to get her shut down because it was anti-black, she's racist, she's a white supremacist, she's this, she's that. So first I'm going to play you this woman's reaction video that has gone viral. We will discuss it because I do agree with her. And then we will discuss a reaction video to her reaction video, okay? So a black owned dental office had a sign posted that said no house shoes, no pajamas, no bonnets, right? And social media was so up in arms that they tried to destroy this woman's business by leaving her bad reviews, saying that the sign was anti-black. I just want to know why everything negative and uncouth has to be labeled black culture. I also want to know why advocating for us to go in public looking like we care about ourselves and how we look is deemed as respectability politics. We should not be condoning and advocating for clear signs of depression because the only times I've ever been raggedy in public is when something was off with me mentally. Rolling out of bed in the morning and going in public with a bonnet and pajamas on and house shoes is unacceptable, uncouth behavior, no matter what race of people does it. And going out in public looking well put together like I care about myself doesn't mean that I'm trying to be like white people or I'm trying to get white people to respect me. Maybe it's because I respect me. Let's make having self-respect a part of black culture. Okay, so now that we have seen the video, I just want to go over a couple of points that she talked about. There's only one thing that I do not agree with with what she said. So the first thing is that every everything uncouth and negative labeled black culture, or why is everything that is labeled negative and uncouth a part of black culture? I would have to agree with her on that, not just the bonnet, but just really in the way that we conduct ourselves and the things that we allow ourselves to listen to, the things that we expose our children to. Case in point, rap music. I was watching a short of somebody else and it wasn't Boosie, I can't remember who it was, but it was, an, it was, a, it was a black man and he said, name me a rap lyric that is respectful. And the people that he was asking the question to couldn't answer him. He said, name me a rap lyric that is respectable. And he said, you can't because rap within itself, that culture is not respectful, right? I'm not saying that all music that is being produced by black people is not respectful. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying some of the core beliefs when it comes to rap and being a gangster and being a thug is not respectful at all, right? So I do agree with her on that. The next one is how we look when we go outside is deemed respectability politics. Um, me leaving the house has, 
it has nothing to do with politics. It has more so to do with me respecting myself. You guys know that, you know, I am from the South, so I am a Southern girl, but I, I was also raised to respect myself, especially when I leave the house. Whenever you leave the house, you are supposed to be presentable. When I was growing up, I would have never been able to leave the house in a bonnet, curlers, PJ bottoms, no matter if those were the PJ bottoms that I rolled out of bed with and left, or if I rolled out of bed and got into or put on another pair of PJs. In this day and age, like, like if I was growing up today in 2023, which we know is so popular, I would have never been able to, to leave the house in leggings if my butt was not covered. To this day, my mother will not leave the house in leggings if her butt is not covered. She feels so uncomfortable. I would have never been able to leave the house looking like that. You always leave the house presentable. I didn't say dress to the nines. I didn't say dress in your Sunday's best. I said presentable. Presentable means a hat, t-shirt, some earrings, jeans, and some sneakers. That's it. You can even take away the earrings, a little backpack, little purse. You're good to go not in your bonnet or crop top leggings and furry Ugg sandals. That's not acceptable and you have on no clothes, <laughs> okay? The next one, we should not be advocating for clear signs of depression. Um, this one for me, I'm not going to label this as depression because this these women clearly think that it's okay to leave the house like that, right? They think it's okay and they think that it's acceptable. So I'm not going to say depressed. The next one, the next thing that she said, going out in public with a bonnet and house shoes is unacceptable and uncouth no matter what race of people does it. And that is correct. However, black women are the only ones that wear bonnets in public. And let me go ahead and say this. I'm not talking about head wraps. I'm not talking about turban, turbans. I'm not talking about, again, cultural head garb. That's not what we're talking about. We are talking about that black bonnet that you bought from your local beauty supply store that you keep leaving the house in. And then she said, last, or lastly, she said, let's make having self-respect a part of black culture. I 100% agree with that. As I said, I'm not talking about leaving the house dressed in the nines, keeping up with the Jones. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. You guys know that I love fashion. So whenever I leave the house, and you guys also know that my contracts are now from home. So whenever I leave the house, I always get dressed up because it makes me feel beautiful. And it just, it makes me feel good. When you look good, you feel good. And another thing that she said that when someone or when a black person, I guess, dresses properly or dresses acceptable when they come outside, that black person is trying to be white or they're trying to gain the respect from white people. That's not true. Me leaving the house in a respectable manner has to do with me, has to do with my self-esteem, has to do with the way I want myself to be represented in my image in the world. It has nothing to do with me trying to be white or trying to look white. And it certainly has nothing to do to gain respect from white people. So now really quickly, I want to give you two examples. One is very, very recent, has happened within the last week. And then one is all the way back from my college days. So I went to Norfolk State go Spartans I was on my way out so I would say this was junior or senior year so this is 2011 2012 if you are not familiar with I guess the way that a college campus works you do have like little restaurants or you do maybe have like a couple of fast food areas where you can get your food from off of your meal plan but you do also have a cafeteria or we used to call it the calf for short you can go in there swipe your card and you can go in there and you can get breakfast lunch and dinner I remember when I was on my way out one day, I saw a sign that says, you cannot come in here with basically the same thing as the dentist said. You cannot come in here in bonnets, house shoes, and pajamas. And as I'm leaving and I'm looking at the sign, I said, wow, people are really leaving the house or actually coming to the calf like that? So you know what's a problem when you have to post a sign about it, okay? And the recent example, as you guys can see, my surroundings are a little bit different. We are in a hotel right now for a insurance claim. The house has been, you know, getting some repairs and some renovations. So over this past weekend, today is Tuesday, this video goes up on Wednesday. Over the weekend, there was a group here from Tennessee. I think they were called like the Young Excellence or Black Men Excellence. The area, you know how like you, when you go to a hotel, sometimes they have complimentary breakfast. And the particular hotel that we are in does made to order omelets, right? 
the i guess you could say atrium or the lobby where people eat their breakfast was packed every single table was packed young women teenage women women my age in their 30s and there were grown women, middle-aged women, who came downstairs in their bonnets. I went downstairs just like this. My head is wrapped, I have on some lounge clothes, and then I have on my Ugg slippers, and I also have on socks. It's cold down there. But I would probably say, I would go, as, I would go from 30 to 40% of the women that came downstairs had bonnets on. And also, I'm not sure if this is a correlation, this is just an observation that I have noticed, Typically, when I see women out in their bonnets, they don't have on any clothes. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that, but the typical thing that I see is somebody will have on a bonnet with like one of those bandeau tops. They will have on leggings or they will have on poom poom shorts. <laughs> and then they'll have on like some type of furry sandal, some type of Ugg sandal, some type of house shoe. I don't know if that's if there's a correlation it's just an observation that i have noticed a majority of the women that i see coming out in public with their bonnets have on no clothes okay or they're scantily clad i will say so that example is from 2023 and then the example that i just gave is from 2011 and of course now it has gotten progressively worse to the point that when i am out i would probably say if i were to see a group of 10 women or 10 black women or just sporadically see back women, I would probably say at least three of them have on bonnets. Not be condoning and advocating for clear signs of depression. If you wear bonnets in public, child, this is the video for you. Last year, I started a business called Free Yourself, Be Yourself, because you can't really be yourself if you haven't freed yourself. I sell bonnets and one of the things I was really, really, really intentional about was the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all some of my individuality bonnets. Um, and honestly, the reason that I designed these bonnets this way is because of these kind of conversations that are being had about, well, you shouldn't wear bonnets in public and if you do, you're ghetto and you're classless and you're not presentable. And honestly, this was just a big F you back to the people that constantly have something to say about people who wear their bonnets in public. Okay. So so you have just seen that video, which is a reaction video to that woman's video or a reaction video to a lot of women who are saying that they agree with the first woman that you should not be wearing your bonnets in public. So first, let me say this. While I commend this young woman for starting her own business, being a solopreneur, being an entrepreneur, I can commend that and I'm very proud of her. However, I cannot I don't agree with her message because again, she is perpetuating this thought that it is okay for you not only to wear your bonnet in public, but for you to just leave the house however you feel, whether you have clothes on, whether you don't have clothes on. The other thing is that she's talking about her design. She wanted it to be her intention or she wanted her design to be really intentional. And I will tell you when she, when I first saw this video and when she was getting ready to hold them up to show the image, I thought it was going to be like, forget you, I love my bonnet, you know, bonnet lovers stand up or I'm gonna wear this bonnet or you gonna get this bonnet to, you know, like some, some like colloquial, saying or some you know catchphrase and then she holds it up and it's two hands holding up the middle finger and i'm just like why it's a vulgar image it's just it would be just the exact same thing as somebody's walking down the street with a sign or a shirt that said f you on it people are going to look at you crazy so number one do you not only have this colorful bonnet on your head but now it has two two hands holding up the middle finger, which essentially is F you. And really to be quite honest, outside of the black community, no one is probably going to understand why she chose that image. A black woman or a black man is going to know or they're going to kind of be hip to that and they're going to say, oh, okay, well you're saying F you about wearing bonnets in public, like that's intentional. Someone outside of the community is just going to say, oh, well that's very inappropriate, you have F you <laughs> on, on on your head wrap or on your bonnet or whatever it is, right? Something else that I did want to point out because people keep using this phrase really when it comes to all things that black women are doing. And I saw this phrase a lot because I looked at some of the reaction videos and I did look at some people's comments. And not only are people saying, you know, we should allow black women to do what they want, which is true. 
and this has to do with society as well, you can allow people to do what they want, but within reason. But I keep hearing people say, stop policing black women. This is not a policing situation. This is a situation, this is a scenario where you need to leave the house in an acceptable manner. This has nothing to do with policing. When did bonnets become a part of black culture? Why is that something that we would even want to, or we would even want associated with our culture? You wearing a bonnet in public is not black culture. It's just lazy, just like the woman said in the video. You not choosing to do your hair, you not choosing to get dressed is lazy. That has nothing to do with black culture. People are trying to make it seem as though that wearing a bonnet in public or just wearing a bonnet in general is a part of black culture. It is when you are going to sleep, you wear a bonnet or how at least I was raised or what the common use for the bonnet used to be is that you wear the bonnet at night to protect your hair or you wrap your hair up to um, protect a style that you have. It wasn't meant for you to wear to bed, roll out of bed, wash your face, wash your, brush your teeth, and then leave and not even do anything to your hair. That's not what it was made for. That is what it has become. But a bonnet used to be a form of protection, not a fashion statement. Okay, so really quickly, the bigger issue. And as you heard me say, it's within the black community, but this also affects women of all generations of all races because you see it here in America today. And I know it is, you know, starting to trickle into other cultures, it's starting to trickle into other countries. But for me, it, in the black community, it starts with the bonnet. And as you guys heard me say in my video, get to know me, I will link that down below. Just because the masses are doing something does not necessarily mean that it's right or it's acceptable. You also heard me say that for me personally, in my observations, Typically, when I see a woman in a bonnet, she typically is scantily clad. And I gave you the example of, you know, the bandeau top or the poom poom shorts or like the leggings and she's, you know, just she's exposed. And that trickles into other cultures or that trickles into other women because in that same video that I will link down below, I told you about a trip that I made to the mall and young women of all ages and all races had on no clothes and I was astonished of actually how little clothing they had on. So for me, it does start with the bonnet. If you allow that, you have to allow everything else, right? It's kind of like a snowball effect, a trickle effect, or it's kind of like opening Pandora's box. And you will hear people talk about this in different, especially in politics. I know there is a huge conversation right now about transgender and gay and all of that. And a lot of people's arguments talk about if you accept one, if you accept one proclivity, you have to start accepting the other ones, right? Because you've already allowed this, you've already opened the door. And if we, the door is already open, but if we continue down this path, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And as you see, it trickles into other aspects of your life. You cannot leave the house in your bonnet or with no clothes on and expect to be respected or expect for your opinions to be heard. I will give you a prime example. Let's say you are going into an interview, a physical interview, not like a telecommuter, like not like a tele, like not like a Zoom meeting, right? Let's say you are going to an interview. Let's say you have on five inch platform heels, you have on, let's say like a blazer, but you have on the world's smallest mini dress. It barely covers your butt. And then you also have so much cleavage and it comes, it's like a very low cut. First of all, you probably wouldn't even be asked into the interview room, but let's just say for this scenario, you are, and you are sitting in front of, let's say three men and two women, and they are all not necessarily conservative dress, but they are business casual. Let's say that. And you walk in, you could have left college as magna cum laude, summa 4.0, all the recommendations in the world, um, all the community service in the world. But once you walk in there and you attempt to have this interview or you attempt, let's say even if you're giving a presentation, once you attempt to open your mouth, the people in that room already have these preconceived notions about you because number one, you chose to come to an interview half dressed. They are no longer going to listen to you. They may let you finish, 
But whatever it is that you have to say is not going to be taken seriously and they're not going to think that you know what it is that is that you're talking about. Also, what's probably going through their mind, let's say this you're up for like a lawyer job or let's say you're up to you're up for a job or you're interviewing for a job that's like client face to face base, right? They're going to be wondering, is this how this person is going to show up whenever they're meeting a client? So I'm trying to give you like a full circle because whether you're out on, I was gonna say on the street, whether you're just out and about in everyday life and you're scantily clad, or if you are going for an interview or if you're in a job, that is going to affect you. Once you walk into that room and those people see how you chose to show up to an interview, they are no longer going to respect you, your opinion, or your bodacious or your bomb resume they won't care because you don't look the part looks matter and i really wish that people would stop telling our young people that they don't they do you will make an assumption when you first meet someone solely based off of how they are dressed it's just the truth. Okay, so as I said in the beginning of this video, this is a very different video when it comes to my channel, but this is a topic that really does intrigue me and I love talking about it. So as you guys will always hear me say, please make sure to keep the comments respectful. We can disagree with one another, but we can still keep it respectful. Let me know what you thought of this video. I just wanna remind you that here on YouTube, I do upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And of course, you know, right here, I'll put my Instagram handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, you guys. Bye.